Good evening. This is CTV News for May 24th. I'm Byron Scott. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our top story tonight, fire breaking out in Capitol Heights at a hotel there this morning, killing a man. It happened just after 630 in a sixth floor room at the La Quinta Inn and Suites on Hampton Park Boulevard. Fire officials say the sprinkler system was working and activated. It was after the fire was put out that they discovered the body inside that room. When firefighters arrived, they encountered a six story uh, hotel uh, report of uh, smoke up on the sixth floor. When they uh, went there, they found a limited amount of smoke and uh, coming from one of the rooms. Uh, they made entry into the room, found that a fire had occurred, that the sprinkler system had extinguished the fire and a deceased adult was found inside of the room. And that fire is under investigation. Well, it was budget adoption day in Prince George's County. The county council voted unanimously to pass the $4 billion fiscal 2019 budget. The spending package represents a $215 million increase over the current budget. The largest chunk, $2 billion, will go to schools. Public safety also gets a hefty portion at $736 million. For some of the council, the day was bittersweet. Due to term limits, this is the last council budget that they will work on, each, the, each of them reflecting on on their time on council. The budget process throughout the last uh, eight years has been a roller coaster in some cases. Uh, we've had some ups and downs. We've had some all oh, knockouts behind closed doors. But at the end of the day, we, we recognize and realize that it's the people of this county that we have to be most concerned about. I do want to um, thank all of my colleagues those who I've been with for eight years, those who I've been with for four years, um, those I've been with for seven years. Um, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank the entire council administration staff. I just want to say briefly that I think since December 2010, when five of us came in here together along with the Baker administration, I think we've made enormous progress on several fronts. And I think that ultimately we are leaving this county better off than when we um, started here. And Council members Mel Franklin and Karen Tolles are running for two new at-large seats, meaning this may not be their last go-round. Well, President Trump calls up a highly anticipated meeting with North Korea. Maya McNutt has more. Thank you, Byron. Today, President Trump canceled the nuclear summit scheduled with Northern Korean leader Kim Jong-un. In a letter from the White House, the president says he was looking forward to the meeting in Singapore next month, but feels it's inappropriate at this time based on tremendous anger and open hostility in Kim Jong-un's recent statement. The letter points out a willingness to meet someday, but ultimately, the president calls this missed opportunity a sad moment in history. And Bowie is seeing a housing boom. Apartments are slated to be built near the marketplace, and the city council recently approving a five-story apartment building as part of the Milford complex. But there is more. There could be a development near the Sacred Heart Catholic Church on Route 450 that could bring in more homes. CTV Sonia Shavaspa has more. The locals call it the Jesuit property. For hundreds of years, this land near the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Bowie has been owned by the Corporation of Roman Catholic Clergymen. Elm Street, a development company out of Virginia, now wants to buy 154 acres and put between 400 to 500 single-family homes and townhouses there. D. Bonocelli Street is right behind the woods where the new homes would be built. If the Jesuits are looking for an income, why didn't they consider building an assisted living home or a retreat slash convention center and have that built on the property? Now, one of the many reasons why residents are opposed to this development is the traffic. Now, as you can see, Route 50 in this area is a one-lane road going both ways, and residents say it already gets crowded. Now, the developer has said that they would widen this road if the project goes through, but many residents fear that would take away the greenery. The uh, traffic is pretty bad, so I think it's going to be even more, more than racetrack road and 450, you know, it's, it's really amazing. And then, of course, when you get, go to uh, Route uh, 3, whether you go north or south, it's going to be uh, it's, uh, very busy. We spoke to one resident who didn't want to be on camera but tells us she doesn't mind the development. Whether it's residential or commercial, it's going to get developed, and I'd much rather have residential development than commercial development because I think we have more control or say-so 
over what happens with the residential than we do with commercial. A group of 150 residents recently attended a community information meeting on the project, which was sponsored by Elm Street. For the 400 or so homes to be built, a zoning change needs to occur. The area is also currently outside the Bowie City limits, which would have to be annexed. The developer has to work with the city to ensure that water and sewer lines are properly put in place. Um, yes, traffic is a concern. Um, but somebody's going to develop that property at some point. So if the more educated you are, you know, I think that's the wiser. It's too much for this, but it, it goes down. Well, look at the increase in the tax base, which is more important, the value of our community, which I think it should be considered. In Bowie, Sonia Shavasva for CTV News. Thank you, Sonia. The county council makes the final decision when it comes to zoning. This project, if approved, could take five to eight years. You're watching CTV News. I'm Monica McNutt.